the biggest release we've ever done for Hazel is now out. It's now available. It's now over nine months of work, 420 something thousand lines of code added, an amazing team and community, lots of work later. Hazel 2023.1 is now out. The very first thing I wanna do is thank all of the supporters who helped make this happen. Without your support on Patreon, none of this would be possible. And I would still probably be working on Frostbite at EA. So what exactly does it mean when I say that we've released Hazel, or we've made a Hazel release? Basically what this means is that we've merged from our development branch called Dev into Master, which is kind of like our release branch. This branch of Hazel is kind of like the stable version of Hazel that is not currently kind of in development. It's been thoroughly QA tested and it should mostly work apart from of course the occasional bug here and there as you get with all software. So a lot of these features that I'm talking about here have been around for a while and we've even shipped games with them, but now they are finally kind of properly tested, fixed, stable and merged into master. Right, so in this video, I just wanted to go through all of the major features that we've added in this release. There are quite a lot, as you can see here from the release notes, which by the way, are on our brand new Hazel documentation website. docs.hazelengine.com has a bunch of new features. Tim has been working very hard on that. Aside from listing all of the new features and changes and bug fixes inside the latest release, Tim has also put together an amazing tutorial on creating your first game in Hazel. So if you are a patron, if you have access to Hazel, you can just get this latest release of Hazel and follow along with this tutorial and you will make this game. And also learn how to build it for the runtime and package it into an actual standalone application, which is really cool. And now let's get into some of the major new features that we have. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was multi-threading. I kind of talked about this in a dedicated video in a way. I didn't go too in depth in it. I'll have that linked up there if you want to check it out. But basically Hazel's runtime now runs on two threads. There's a main thread and there is a render thread. Now this theoretically up to doubles the performance on the CPU side of things. Of course, that depends on what kind of game you've made and what it's actually doing, but it's a really nice and welcome performance boost. The other huge major new feature is asset packing or asset packaging, which basically refers to the fact that you can now actually build all of your assets and scenes and everything that kind of makes up your project into something called an asset pack. I actually kind of worked on this feature a lot during last Latum Dare that we did, Latum Dare 51, where we made dichotomy and we actually shipped with these two major new features, multi-threading and asset pack even though they were kind of, I guess, in a beta state, because of course they're only going into the release now, it still let us kind of distribute it and test it and make sure it's stable before we kind of committed to creating an actual release. Okay, the next feature is sound graphs. This is courtesy of Jay, who is our kind of volunteer audio developer who's very passionate about audio and UI because not only has he made this beautiful sound graph system, he's also made all of the UI for it. So this kind of note graph UI you see here is all thanks to Jay. I'm not going to get too deep into the specifics of sound graphs here, but I will say that this sound graph on screen produces this audio result. And I even had a go at making a sound that we used in Dichotomy using a sound graph for Last Lap and Dare as well, which was fun. Okay, next up we have better gizmos. We added like, in fact, the whole kind of concept of multi-selection is something that is quite new. So you can see that we can kind of select multiple entities at once here and apply different transformations to them. We can also change this multi-transform target to pick, for example, like what point things are rotated around, if it should be like the center of all the objects or the individual origins. So that's definitely a good improvement and very handy. Depth of field is something that I added, uh, I don't know, like six, eight months ago, quite a while ago, to be honest. You can see it here in this like little depth of field test scene where we just have a focus target that's programmed to kind of change the depth of field effect focus from near to far as it moves. And it's, it's quite a nice effect. Like you can see here during the development of Dichotomy, I made this like... <laughs> nice piece of art here to highlight some of the cool kind of graphics features that Hazel has. Spotlights have also been around for quite a while. This is something that Karim added. They have basically all the properties you would expect. You can change like the cone and the attenuation and the intensity, all of that kind of stuff, as well as like the color. And we also have the ability to make one spotlight at the moment be shadow casting. We haven't really expanded this to multiple spotlights, but that is something that will come in the future. And you can see a spotlight with shadows here being used as part of our kind of animation test scene that Tim put together. All right, 2D sprite rendering. This is something that has also been around for a while, but we finally kind of had the time to actually polish the workflow for this. So there's a sprite renderer component, as you can see, and you can just place around 2D graphics here that do not go through like the standard 3D rendering pipeline. So here it's actually used to create this UI that you 
you can see for our kind of Space Invaders clone. The server's not running at the moment, which is why it's not loading the scores, but these kind of UI elements, aside from the text, is created using that sprite renderer. We also have a debug renderer that you can actually use from C Sharp. I use this back in my How Ray Casting and Sphere Intersection Works video that's part of the Ray Tracing series. You can see that on screen here. Just basically calling debug line from C Sharp along with Hazel's really fast kind of iteration time for C Sharp scripts. You just hit Control Shift B to build it, instantly reloads it while the scene is playing like this. You can see it was really easy to kind of demonstrate and visualize how like in this case, Ray Casting and Ray Tracing works. And in general, the debug renderer is very useful of course for just debugging stuff while you're making your game. And finally, here is a collection of editor UI improvements that we've made. So you can now create scripts through the actual editor and then have that be open in Visual Studio, which is quite useful. It'll automatically kind of set up an entity template as you can see as well, which just makes the process a little bit faster. Tim has also gone ahead and remade like all of the icons for the editor basically. So this is what the content browser icons used to look like. We had a lot of these kind of uh, default icon where an icon wasn't made for a particular type. And now you can see they all look very nice. Now for the content browser specifically, I did actually work on thumbnails for it a while ago, which didn't make it to this release. So that will come in a future release where you can basically just see like the images actually appear and like the prefabs and the meshes will actually kind of, like you'll see the thumbnail for them. You guys know what thumbnails are. Uh, same kind of situation for the components. They used to just be like boxes. Now they have actual icons and lots of other stuff here and there as well. And here's also the editor console, which used to look kind of bland and now kind of looks better. Now, as I mentioned, there is lots more you can go to docs.hazelengine.com and look at the release notes yourself and just see like everything that's included in this release. So hopefully you guys enjoy these new features for those of you who do use Hazel or like to learn from Hazel. We're going to try and do these releases quarterly, hopefully. And we'll definitely be doing another release before the next Ludum Dare game jam, since we want to obviously use a stable version of Hazel for that game jam. Huge thank you to everyone again for your amazing support. Patreon.com slash the is how you can support this project and get access to all the source code and Hazel itself. Go ahead, give it a try, report any bugs that that you find. And if any of this kind of stuff I've covered today piques your interest, you want to know more about it, leave a comment below and I'll try and provide some more information. Thank you guys again. Goodbye.